Hey everyone, Brandon Kaiser here, CEO of Biggest Fan Consulting, and this video is called Five Things Your Student Section Needs. And this video is to serve as a checklist, so whether you're an administrator who is in charge of or oversees the student section, or you're an administrator who wants to grow your student section, or you're a student section leader, we want you to go through and make sure you self-identify that your school has all of these five things. If your school only has four out of five or zero out of five, then you really need to evaluate, put your heads together with your team, and, I, and ask a question, why do we not have one, all uh, five of these things? Because all five of these are essential, not just for a student section, but for a student section to be great. So what is number one? Student leadership. I talk about all this all the time, and we call it top 1% student leadership. We're talking about student sections, and student sections, attendance, engagement, and spirit are product of culture, and the only people who can build and change culture are people which have to be students because that's the demographic of a student section. So if your student section does not have an official student section leadership team that is ran by students, then your student section is not great. Period. It might be good, but it's probably dependent on the record of the team or the administrator. So I've talked to um, high schools, I've talked to colleges, even Power 5 schools who do not have student leaders. The student section falls under marketing and they don't even have student leaders, which means they're actually bottlenecking their student section. They're not actually unlocking what is possible if they were to onboard, support, and empower student leaders. Now these student leaders, they have to be borderline psycho, they have to be the most passionate and crazy students at games, but they also have to be responsible and take care of business behind the scenes. Because a student section is an organization, it should be run like a business and it takes a lot of work, but if those students are nowhere to be found on game day, then they're just running you know, an organized group rather than a student section. So your student section absolutely needs to have student leadership, and if you're watching this in your school or student section, does not have student leadership, go find student leaders and bring them on board. And I promise you, your student section will be better next year than it is today. Number two, brand. Your student section needs to have a brand. It needs to have a name. Why? A brand is what gives students something to latch onto. It gives them the emotional attachment to the experience of the student section and it helps with marketing and promotion, right? When you have a name, when you have a logo that people can see on a t-shirt or on an Instagram post or on a banner, they automatically associate the student section and their experience in that student section with that brand. So again, I've talked to high schools, I've talked to Power 5 institutions, there's no name, there's no brand of the student section, it's just the student section. We need to name and brand the student section that's going to only increase the buy-in and the ownership of the students that are within the section, right? We're talking about student section. So we need to provide an experience for the students who are actually coming to games and showing up. And this gives them something to identify with and take ownership in. So if you do not have a student section brand or a name, pick one. It's not the name that gives meaning or builds culture. The culture is what gives meaning to a brand so it could be as simple as whatever you want to call it, or it can be a cool name, it can be complicated, but we have to have a brand and a name. Number three, social media accounts. When I say social media accounts, I mean student section specific social media accounts ran by student leaders featuring the student section. These are not athletic accounts. These are not school spirit accounts. These are student section accounts. So again, if your student section or your school does not have a specific student section social media account, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, whatever new social media is out, you need one. Why? Because social media is a great way, one, to communicate with students because they live on their phones, two, to highlight the culture so students can visualize themselves participating. So many schools rely on their athletics account to promote student tickets or to invite students to a game. What does this mean? This means it's a ton of pictures of athletes and it's a ton of marketing graphics. Let me just give you some free advice here. The student section social media accounts should never have a marketing graphic, ever. And 
It shouldn't even really feature athletes that much. Your student section social media accounts, especially Instagram is so visual, should only be featuring students and highlighting the culture that you are trying to build on your campus. Because if it's a marketing graphic, as soon as that event happens, that post is completely irrelevant because it happened a year ago. And if you're just featuring athletes, students are gonna ask when they go to your student section social media accounts, what's in it for me? And so if you're just featuring athletes, they're like, okay, they're just begging us to come and support the athletes rather than say, hey, you come participate in this culture because this is gonna be fun for you and you can participate and you can actually make an impact on the game. So again, I've met so many high schools, power five, division one institutions who they don't have a student section specific social media account. One, because they don't have a brand or student leadership. So again, if you don't have one or any of these three, I'm not saying your student section's bad. I'm saying you're not unleashing and unlocking the full potential of what your student section could be. And that's what we're striving for, right? 100% capacity, standing and engaged every single game. So we need leaders, we need a brand, and we need student section specific social media accounts ran by student leaders featuring the students in the student section, highlighting the culture, and that's how you communicate that information to students. Four. In game coordination. This is overlooked. All right. First, we need to come up what's the goal and what's the vision. If it's a basketball game, a student section should be cheering and chanting every single possession, every offensive possession, every defensive possession, no exceptions. That should be the goal. Well, how do we get to that goal when the cheerleaders are starting their own cheer? The student leaders are starting their own cheer and a student who's trying to be funny in the seventh row is starting their own cheer. How do we um, uh, systemize that and unify those students? In-game coordination. Well, Brandon, our student section's really spread out among three sections and we've got a lower bowl and an upper bowl. Okay, well, it's still possible to have students cheer the same thing at the same time through in-game coordination. So if you don't have in-game coordination, you don't systemize your cheers, you don't have a consistent workflow of here's who's starting the cheers and win, here's what the leaders are doing, here's where the leaders are located, here's how they're easy to follow visually and vocally, engaging the students so the student body who's actually in the student section sees the leaders, know what's to cheer and win. If you don't systemize that and you're not working with your band, spirit programs, cheer, dance, mascot, then you're not optimizing your in-game coordination. And if you're not optimizing your in-game coordination, you're actually not maximizing your in-game energy and impact. Because it's a student section, we want to be loud, we want to be dominant, Dominant, of course we want to be positive, but we want to make an impact on the game and provide a home court advantage. And the only way to do that is in-game coordination. I watch so many games on ESPN, ESPN Plus, I see the student section on TV, and it's a big top 25 matchup, and the students are going like this. This is a top 25 matchup, and students in the second row are going like this. They should be cheering and chanting every single possession and that's for a basketball game. So how do we do that? Coordinating in game. This takes a lot of trial and error and this takes a lot of effort. Hey, uh, cheerleaders, are you starting the cheer? Are we starting the cheer? Hey, dance, can you join? Hey, band, are you guys starting your own cheer? Are you heckling or can you join? Student leaders, are you in front? Are you facing the court or are you facing the students? Are you spread out among the students? Are you actually showing which cheers that you're doing? Because sound actually travels slower than what you can see. So if you're starting a defense chant, and you're expecting the students in the top row or the top upper bowl to join on based on what they hear, they're gonna be delayed. So we need to coordinate in-game cheers to make it easy to follow. So that way, if I'm in the 50th row, I can look and I see someone going defense. Well, now I know when to join because I see it. So in-game coordination, most people don't even think through this much detail. And last is succession planning. Let's face it, if it's a student section and it has to be student-led, what, what's, uh, what's kind of a, a pro and con of, of working with student sections? Students graduate, right? There's turnover, just like in athletics marketing or from staff turnover. Students graduate and if it has to be student-led and those students are in charge of the social media accounts, they're in charge of the brand, they're in charge of the in-game coordination, well, what happens when you have an amazing student leader and they graduate? You're back to square one and they lose momentum. Why is succession planning so important, especially in the college space? Because often the student section falls under athletics marketing and there's a lot of turnover in athletics. 
people either opt out of the industry or they you know get a, a promotion or a career promotion and they head to the next opportunity awesome really happy for them but they're kind of leaving a void for the student section this is why it has to be student-led and this is why you have to have internal succession planning down to every detail of when what type of student are we recruiting what time of year are we recruiting these students? What grade are we recruiting? How are we gonna onboard them in the spring, set proper expectations so they commit for the next year, train them over the summer, and then I know when I graduate, the student section system is gonna be fine because I taught them. And, um, and this is one thing that we really figured out and did really well at GCU. This is why six years after I've graduated, I can go to a GCU game and I know exactly what to expect, why the social medias have grown, why the brand has such an emotional resonance on campus, why their social media accounts um, are some of the top in the country and their followers have continued to scale up, why I know there's gonna be in-game coordination and every student's gonna be saying the same thing at the same time, because succession planning. I train the leaders below me who train the leaders below them in every single detail. And so if you don't have succession planning, well, then you might be getting momentum, but when those leaders graduate, or if you play a big part as a staff administrator, and you take that next opportunity, and there's no succession plan, that student section at your school is going to decline. So here are the five essential things every student section needs. Student leadership, again, student section, if you don't have student leaders, not that you have a bad student section, you're just not maximizing and unlocking the full potential. Two, brand. If you don't have a brand, you're not giving students something to latch on to emotionally, take ownership in, um, and, and really um, you know, post uh, on social media, and that's going to, that's free marketing for you, it's free exposure. Three, social media. Have, you have to have uh, student section specific social media accounts to highlight the culture. You know, we talk about these digital platforms, awesome. Right? If I'm an incoming freshman, I wanna to be told who to follow and does this look fun? For in-game coordination, you need to systemize in-game cheers, chants, music, so everybody's on the same page. In five, succession planning. If your student section is only good as your leaders without a succession plan, the future of the leaders are not going to be set up for success. So that's it for this video. I hope it helps you at your school, whether you're an administrator or student leader, be sure to subscribe below for more content. I'll see you on the other side.